Welcome back to Math Defined. I'm Mrs. C, and today we're completing ratio tables. Ratio tables help us uncover patterns in numbers, and I'm going to show you not just one, but two powerful strategies to solve them. First, we'll look for patterns, and then we'll unlock the power of the value of the ratio. First up, we have a ratio table comparing pencils to notebooks, with the first ratio in the table being 12 pencils to 3 notebooks. But what exactly is a ratio table? It's a table that takes one ratio and expands it, showing all the ways you can multiply or divide to get equivalent ratios. You can look for patterns in the numbers or use the value of the ratio to calculate the missing values. Let me show you what I mean. First, I'm going to look for a pattern. Do you see any? Look at the 3 in the first ratio. Multiplying 3 by 2 equals 6, so we can multiply the 12 by 2 as well, resulting in 24. Next, let's try multiplying 12 by 3, which equals 36. So we'll multiply 3 by 3 to get 9. To find the last missing value, let's multiply 3 by 5, which equals 15, and we'll multiply 12 by 5 to get 60. And that completes the table. The pattern in this table was pretty easy to see, but sometimes looking for a pattern can be confusing and frustrating. When this happens, you have another option. You can find the value of the ratio. Ratios are a comparison of two quantities using division. So to find the value of any ratio, you just divide the first quantity by the second one. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so the value of the ratio is 4. This means that the amount of pencils is 4 times the amount of notebooks. But how is this going to help us find missing values in the table? Let's look at the first ratio in the table, 12 over 3 again. We use the value of the ratio as a multiplicative pattern to find the numerator or the first quantity in the ratio. Multiplying 3 by 4 results in 12, and we can use this multiplicative value to find all the missing values in the table. If there are 6 notebooks, 6 times 4 is 24. There are 24 pencils. Next, how many notebooks do we need if we have 36 pencils, or what times 4 is 36? 9 times 4 is 36, so we would need 9 notebooks. And lastly, if we have 15 notebooks, how many pencils would we need? 15 times 4 is 60. We would need 60 pencils. Pretty easy, don't you think? Let's try another one. This time, we are comparing cups of sugar to cups of flour. The only complete ratio we are given in the table is 16 to 8. Do you see a pattern? An easy way to find the pattern for this table is to find the value of the ratio. We'll use the given ratio 16 over 8. To find the value, we divide 16 by 8, which is 2. So the value of the ratio is 2, which means that there is 2 times the amount of sugar than flour. Looking at the first ratio in the table, if we have 5 cups of flour, then to find out how many cups of sugar we need, we just multiply the cups of flour by 2 to get 10 cups of sugar. Next, what times 2 will result in 30? That would be 15. Finally, to find the cups of sugar needed if we have 25 cups of flour, we multiply 25 times 2 to get 50 cups of sugar. One nice advantage to using the value of the ratio to find missing values is that it always works and the multiplicative pattern stays the same throughout the table. Let's try a more challenging ratio table next. This table is comparing inches to feet. And wow, this table might look very overwhelming with all these fractions. Trying to find a pattern might get very frustrating. So let's just find the value of the given ratio in the table. 1 half over 1 24th. Don't let this complex fraction scare you. It's just a division problem. 1 half divided by 1 24th. Multiplying by the reciprocal results in 24 over 2, which simplifies to 12. So the value of the ratio is 12. 
and we can multiply the number of feet by 12 to find the number of inches. The next ratio in the table is one inch to how many feet, or what times 12 is equal to one. We can use division to find the answer, one divided by 12. Then multiplying by the reciprocal, we get 1 12th. To find the next missing value in the table, we will multiply 1 8th by 12. 1 8th times 12 over 1 gives us 12 over 8, which we can simplify by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 4, resulting in 3 over 2. To find the last missing value in the table, we will need to use division again to find out what times 12 equals 1 4th. So we'll divide 1 4th by 12. Multiplying by the reciprocal results in 1 48th. And now the table is complete. We just unlocked two powerful methods to complete any ratio table. Finding patterns works when numbers are simple and easy to multiply. But using the value of the ratio will work every time, even when things get tricky with fractions. And if you know how to calculate fractions on your calculator, this might become your go-to method. Which method did you like better? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video helped you out. And until next time, keep math awesome.